They look like giant stones abandoned on the beach, but in reality, they are the first line of defense against the sea. Concrete blocks shaped like tetrahedrons, designed not to decorate but to save entire cities from the ocean's fury. In a storm, these blocks can be the difference between an intact seawall and millions of dollars in damage. The sea never stops. Every wave is a blow of energy that erodes beaches, breaks down walls, and drags away sand. Coastal erosion is a silent enemy that advances day after day. According to UNESCO, a quarter of the planet's beaches are already showing an alarming rate of retreat. In coastal countries, the economic losses from storms and hurricanes can reach hundreds of millions of dollars in a single season. Without protection, a port, a fishing village or even an entire city can be exposed to the brute force of nature. The power of a wave may seem harmless when it barely wets your feet, but on a large scale it is devastating. The energy of a wave depends not only on its height, but also on its speed and density. A 3-meter wave crashing against a seawall can release a force equivalent to the impact of several cars traveling at high speed. The storm surge generated by a hurricane can carry more energy than thousands of military explosives. That is the magnitude of the battle engineers are trying to stop with concrete blocks. The quest for the perfect geometric shape to break the wave's power began earlier than many think, with pioneering work in the 1930s France. But it was in post-war Japan, facing increasingly ferocious typhoons, that an engineer took that initial concept, refined it, and transformed it into the global coastal defense icon we recognize today, the tetrapod. Their shape was not a whim. Each leg is oriented in such a way that when stacked, the blocks interlock, forming a stable, interwoven wall that does not shift easily. Unlike solid, straight walls that are prone to cracking or catastrophic collapse, Tetrapods are designed to convert the direct, sledgehammer blow of a wave into chaotic turbulence, dissipating its destructive force. So how do they really work? The key lies in the fundamental physics of water. When a wave hits a flat, solid surface, nearly all of its energy is reflected back in a violent, concentrated rebound. In contrast, when it meets a breakwater made of these irregular, porous blocks, the water is forced to split. Some of it passes through the labyrinth of gaps, another part is deflected in countless directions, and the wave's energy is scattered and drained. It's like trying to deliver a powerful punch against a wall of dense fog. The force simply cannot land because its target dissipates and escapes. This combination of interlocking strength and permeability is what makes the blocks so effective. Today, Japan has more than half of its coastline protected by millions of these units. They are so commonplace they have become part of the landscape, to the point where tourists often see them as modern sculptures scattered across the sand. But Japan isn't the only country that uses them. In Mexico, the Philippines, the United States, and dozens of other nations, they are placed in harbors and along coastal highways as a necessary investment. Their scale is also impressive. A single block can weigh anywhere from 1 ton to over 25 tons. It takes thousands of them to cover just one kilometer of coastline. Each block is cast in giant steel molds and placed using specialized cranes or barges. This isn't just a construction project, it's a large-scale engineering operation. And here comes a key fact. The cost of building one kilometer of defense with tetrapods can exceed $10 million, depending on the block size and the water depth. It seems like an enormous expense, until you compare it to the cost of rebuilding a coastal highway wiped out by a hurricane, which can surpass $50 million. Or the cost of repairing a strategic port, which can easily reach $200 million. In other words, for every dollar invested in prevention, between $5 and $10 can be saved in reconstruction. There are clear examples. In 2018, a powerful typhoon struck the coast of Osaka, Japan. The areas shielded by tetrapods resisted with minimal damage, while unprotected zones suffered flooding that paralyzed the international airport for days, with losses exceeding $300 million. In contrast, on beaches in the Philippines where no breakwaters had been installed, the sea swallowed entire villages, forcing hundreds of families to relocate. These silent grey blocks often determine whether a natural disaster becomes a humanitarian crisis or a controlled incident. But they are not a perfect solution. The concrete blocks also generate significant debate. While they protect infrastructure, they alter the natural dynamics of waves and currents. This means that the erosion they stop on one beach can be transferred kilometers down the coast, affecting other coastal zones. 
Environmentalists point out that, in the long term, this engineered solution can create more problems than it solves. Furthermore, manufacturing and placing them requires enormous quantities of concrete, with an economic and environmental cost that cannot be ignored. The invisible impact of these structures lies underwater. There, the turbulence generated by the tetrapods changes marine ecosystems. Some species find refuge in their cavities, transforming the blocks into improvised artificial reefs. But others see their natural feeding and breeding routes disrupted. It is a stark reminder that while engineering may solve a human problem, there is always an environmental price to pay. In response to these criticisms, modern alternatives have emerged. Some engineers propose eco-engineering designs for blocks, incorporating specific cavities and textures that allow marine life to colonize them, turning them into intentional artificial reefs. Other solutions look to hybrid approaches, combining traditional engineering with the restoration of natural defenses like mangroves, dunes, and coral reefs, systems that have historically been the most effective and sustainable buffers against the sea. In countries like Indonesia and Mexico, experiments with these techniques are already underway, blending concrete with nature to find a better balance. The debate is global. Some experts argue that covering coastlines in concrete is fighting the inevitable. The sea will always find a way to reclaim its ground. Others maintain that without these structures, entire cities would become uninhabitable within a few decades. The World Bank warns that by 2050, the global cost of protecting coastlines against rising sea levels could surpass $1 trillion, a figure that transforms every concrete block into part of a colossal infrastructure and economic challenge. So, what do these blocks truly represent? For some, they are proof of human ingenuity, capable of holding back titanic forces. For others, they are a concrete scar upon the coastal landscape, a constant reminder that we are battling an unstoppable enemy. The truth is that every concrete block on a beach hides a story of survival, of cities that refuse to yield ground to the ocean, of engineers buying time against a nature that never stops, and of societies forced to decide whether the answer lies in more concrete or in learning to coexist with the sea. Every wave that breaks against these blocks reminds us of the scale of the battle. The sea does not rest, and neither does engineering. The future of our coastlines will depend on a delicate balance between science, economics, and respect for nature. And that is the true challenge. Not just to hold back the sea for a moment, but to build a future where we can coexist with it without destroying what we are trying to protect. And now I want to know your opinion. Do you believe we should continue lining our coasts with these blocks? Is it time to seek more natural solutions? Or should we let the sea and nature simply run their course? Leave it in the comments because your perspective is also part of this global conversation. Subscribe to CDC Creators Club and let's keep discovering the world around us.